Some film shoots are harder than others, as was the case with our return to Whitetail Lake, located in the East Kootenays of BC. Large rainbows were cruising the flats, but spooked easily due to the sunny conditions. We faced similar hardships at Morgan Lake, located just outside Kamloops, BC. Rather than letting a few quality fish go to waste, we've combined the two shoots and benches into a single show. So it's a two for one episode today, as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. Able, the reel for the record books. The Freshwater Fishery Society of BC, making fishing in BC even better. And Arctic Adventures, providing memorable fishing experiences since 1969. You just put it beside him then? Yeah, I gotta get his interest level. That one, see, that's the guy who just hit mine. Okay, he's coming from mine. Oh, and he busted me off. He broke you? He broke me off. Yeah, you'll see him move for it. Oh, he's just out of range. Ah, he's facing the wrong way. Oh, there, he's going your way. Yeah. Yeah, let's trip it now. You gotta get close. Took it. Oh, there, I got him. I got him. Oh, that's a nice one. He just charged it. Oh, 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 that was awesome. He just spun around and yanked it. When you can sight fish him and throw it out there and hook him, that's just the best. Big guys on the flats. You know, when you get in six feet, five feet of water and you're casting sight fishing for these big boys, fantastic. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh the booby oh, end. Oh. <laughs> that's a gorgeous fish. That's what they love on these moral flats. You know, this is a tequila booby. One of our newest ones. Oh, there he is. Booby's out. And look at this fish. Dale, you want to grab the net there? Okay. Oh, look at that. Isn't that a gorgeous fish? Like, that's 20, 26 inches long. Like, it's just a toad. Just beautiful. And he's gone, the big guy. Oh, come on. Boy, he chased it. Oh, he chased it the whole All time. All the way, it was right All behind. the way in. Man, you wouldn't need it, eh? He chased oh, it. Oh, he chased it. Oh, that was unreal. The guy was right behind it, just following it and following right. it. Right, he was like an inch behind the fly. He just wouldn't take it. There's another one coming down from the oh, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Another dandy. And he was zipping. Oh, he was zipping. He wanted it. Oh, that's a good fish. You better put on the another whale. Out. <laughs> oh, this one's another five, you know, four or five pound fish. Just gorgeous. Oh, how frustrating. I had another dandy on. 
you know, a good five pound fish, and I lost him right by the boat. That's oh, tough yeah, though, you but know. Uh, but I got to see him, just to see him swim up, you know, we're in probably five feet of water, fishing uh, full sink line, so we have deep seven lines on with, uh, with booby patterns. And it's great on these marl bottoms because the booby just sits right above the marl, even slides through it, you don't get hooked up. And the fish love it, they just chase behind it. And I'll do a little talk on the retrieve after, but you can see it's just real short, quick pulls. You just want to drive those fish crazy. Darn, that's two nice ones now. Two big Yeah, toads. but the watch that guy kick and then he really zipped after yeah. he bit it too. It was like Did he a... ever. Right there again, look at the guy. He's coming right towards you, Dale. Look yeah, at I know. It's porpoising. It's crazy. Huh? How big is he, Dale? Not oh, bad. not as big as the other guys, but another one on the... On tequila, so I've changed up. I've changed the color of mine. I'm going away from tequila to a different color. I'm gonna try a little, uh, little olive guy. A little healthy guy? Yeah. Nice chrome little football. <laughs> Look at tequila sitting in, the, in his <laughs> Look mouth. Look at the tequila's picking tequila. up. Tequila. Oh, there it is. Okay. Today on the bench, I'm gonna tie you up the tequila booby. If you're gonna sight fish shallow water Morro Flats, this fly is a must. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. We'll use a size eight or 10 scud hook to tie on, some six aught light Cahill thread to tie with, some pink polar flash for the tail, some medium round foam eyes for the eyes, some yellow fritz for the back body and some orange fritz for the front body. To start the fly off, I've tied on my thread, as I always do. I've kept the thread close to the eyelet, and now what I'm gonna do is lay on the, the foam for the eyes right at the front, and just wrap it in and figure eight around the foam to form two foam eyes on this fly, and you wanna make sure these eyes stay fairly big. We'll trim them down a little bit later. Now that the eyes are tied in, I've moved my thread to the rear of the hook, and I've taken a small clump of my polar flash, and now I'm just gonna wrap it forward and tie it in nice on the hook, and then I'll trim it a little later to size. And we don't want it much more than a half an inch long. Now that the tail's tied in, I've got my yellow fritz, and I've just stripped off the end just to make sure I'm down to the, the fibers, and just grab it onto the hook, tie it back right to the tail, and then we'll take a few wraps forward just to form the back part of the body. And again, just a few wraps and only go halfway up the hook. Now that the yellow fritz is tied into the back of the hook, I'm gonna take my orange fritz and I'm gonna go right up behind the eyes, wrap back about halfway down the hook, wrap the thread back to my eyelet, and then again, only take a couple of, couple of wraps. And as you wrap this fritz, just make sure you pull it back and tie it in right behind the eyes. Now that the orange fritz is tied in, we're gonna whip finish right behind the eyes. And then after we whip finish, what we're gonna do is take our scissors and just trim the eyes so they're nice and round. We're just gonna cut off the edges and form some nice round eyes. So there it is, the finished tequila booby. As I mentioned on the intro, if you're gonna fish some Morro Flats, this fly is a must have. And remember, short, quick strips very effective. Oh, wow. Ooh. And you know, the thing is, they're not very big, but they're hot fish. Oh, when Man. they hit, they really hot go away. Eh? Just crank it. They just love tequila. Tequila. <laughs> He's a nice little fat guy. I'll just undo him here. Oh, there he goes. He's off. There it is. What I tied you on the bench, so everybody can see it. You know, it's the, it's the craziest thing in nature. <laughs> the old tequila, but it works real well. So I go through the recommended setup. I mean, real short leaders. So I've only got maximum, you know, what's that? Four, four feet, four feet from my full sink line down to my, uh, down to my fly. And I'm using a deep seven line. So the most important part of this whole setup is the fly line. This fly line gets you down. If the deep seven, it drops about nine inches per second. It's one of the fastest 
dropping lines, they, they sell real, and it gets right to the bottom. We're fishing 25 feet of water. You cast it out, and then I let it wait. So I'll wait probably at least a minute or two for it to get to the bottom. So I'll just cast one out. And you just let it go right to the bottom. You give it about a minute or two until you're on the bottom, and then quick strips. And I'll show you the quick strips once the fly line gets down. So the thing is, now that it's sunk, I let it go right to the bottom, 25 feet. Just three long, three or four long strips and let it sit. And then again, just three, three or four long. That gets it attracted, the fly floats up. So all you're doing is giving a few pulls, letting the fly go to the bottom, and then it floats up because of those eyes. So again, a few, few short pulls, and then let it sit. Keep working it this way. And they're great deep water tractors. I mean, that's what, when fish are not keen on any insects at all, like today, they're just not keen on anything. You gotta go deep and you have to try to track them. Today we're on a small little lake outside of Kamloops, British Columbia. Normally we'll set up, we'll anchor up, we'll fish leeches, we'll try chironomids, and we're going to work the ledges. So I've got the electric motor down, and all we're going to do is wind drift and work all these edges because it's late June, early July. A lot of the chironomid hatches are finished, but what they're after is a couple of special items. Of course, you know, we've got the bulldog on. I'm trying, starting with the bulldog. Dale's got on the white marimba muddler. There's a whole bunch of different bait fish that move through this wooded pile area, so all you want to do is wind drift and fish it. Well, at least we know they're working back there. Yeah, it's all up that wood. Yeah. I, this is where I was last night. I did really well just on this shoreline. Like I said, then I would turn with the frog boat and then I just trolled back. Like I just oh, yeah? trolled my fly back and then hit a couple of fish going back up, then came down again and casted. And it was funny, there was the big guys, some of the big guys I caught, they wanted it trolled, like they just wanted it kind of not stripped. It was, oh, oh, it's a nice fish. Nice yeah. fish. Very nice, on the crony. Had to go with the chronomid. It was time. Found a nice little shoal to anchor up on. So we anchored a little deeper, we anchored in about 20 feet and just came up onto the shoal that comes up to about eight feet by those weeds. And whoa, whoa, man, this is a good fish. And as soon as that fly got right on top of that shoal, I'm down about seven feet, so I knew when it swung in, it was gonna actually rise up close to the bottom, and that was the key. And this guy hit, and he's, he's a beauty, another dandy. Wow. Nice. And he took a, uh, a light bright chronomid. That's a new, uh, new pattern that we have, a new pattern that, uh, of course, we've modified, and, we use light bright material with some, some other fluorescent materials. Works really well, so maybe that good candidate for the bench. Oh, look at this one, that's beauty. We'll let Dale do the honors. Oh, there he comes. Good size fish, real nice. Oh, there he is. Beauty. Okay, more of a take right on the, right on the top lip, as always. Right there, tough, because it's such a bent over hook. There it is there. There's a little crony, just a little guy. Just a nice little light bright. You can see the color is nice and green. We'll get this guy going. Another beautiful fish. Look at these fish, they're gorgeous. Oh, there he is there. Pretty, pretty fish. Oh, wants to go. There he goes. Nice and casual to the bottom. Yeah. Okay, well. Just started off. We just got out here. It's, you know, it's a little cloudy. It's early though, right? We yeah. just got on the water. It's, uh, we've been out here about 10 minutes. Found a nice little area. Beautiful little lake in the Camelos area. You know, we're way up quite high because it is a hot day. It's, you know, it's probably 30 degrees down at Camelos today. So we had to go quite high up. But big fish in this lake. Yeah, I think this lake has some pretty big fish in it. Well, I fished what we heard. in the spring anyway. Yeah. But this is again, we're all by ourselves. You know, it's the end of June and there's so many lakes in the Kamloops area that you can pick one and we just yeah. came up to this one and there's nobody but us. It's a good start. It's a With good the little start. crony. I know Absolutely. you're chucking the bulldog for a well, change. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's all good. Try. I'll try the crony. I got some new patterns we're going to tie. 
or that, I, that I've tied on the bench this winter, and I'm trying them all, and that was one of them. It worked pretty good. Yeah, so it could good. be a good candidate for the bench. Yeah, it didn't take long. No, so no 10 minutes. Might even see me with a little strike indicator on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think just a little guy now. Got a little bit of cloud cover, and you know we got the one. Yeah, we got a couple on the, uh, couple on the chronomid, but then they just switched off. The chronomid just turned right off. Saw a couple of mayfly nymphs hatch, so I put on a little mayfly. This is one that was from way back. One of our, uh, one of our may mayfly nymphs we tied on the bench probably 15 years ago. It's a multicolored mayfly nymph, and this guy's small. I'm just gonna unbutton him. Everybody can see him down there. He's just a. Just a little guy, but you can see where he took the mayfly nymph right in the, right in the side of the lip. So I'll just try to unbutton him here. Ooh, slow down. I'll show everybody the fly. Oh, there he goes. And this is a pattern we tied up years ago, and it's just multicolored. It's a multicolor mayfly kind of damsel imitation, and it imitates both things. And it works really good, you know, as long as you've got those multicolors. It's got a brown and a green and a light green in it. And uh, they've really shut down on everything. Dale had a hit on a leech, and I put that gone, and first cast, and I got one. So hopefully we see some more mayflies popping off. But always be aware, you know, when you're on the water, you got to keep looking on the water. I mean, the chronomids totally died off. There wasn't a chronomid to be seen. And then we saw a couple of adult mays come off, but not many. But you know, even sometimes that's enough to get them cranked up. So we'll give this another shot, see if we can get something else. Every year I receive new materials to tie with, and this year I received some Light Bright, and it's a great material if you want a little flash on your fly. So today I'm going to tie you up the Light Bright Coronamid. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. We'll tie the fly in a size 12 emerger hook. We'll use some ADOT black thread to tie with. We'll use a small white super bead as a bead, some black thread for the body, some lime green flex floss for the rib, some peacock light bright for the thorax, and for the buds, we'll use some lime green fabric paint mixed with UV fly finish. I started the fly off as I normally do with the bead onto the hook and the thread on the hook. I've taken one strand of my flex floss and I move just behind my bead and tie in the flex floss there. Just tie it in just nice and loosely, one wrap. Pull your flex floss and then just wrap back with your thread right down to the hook bend. And this will be a real nice uniform body for you after. And go right about halfway down that hook bend. Now that the flex floss is tied in, I'm going to actually form the body with the black thread. And I want it slightly tapered. So again, keep it fairly thin at the back and just taper it up. And just put a nice little taper on there. And once you have a bit of a black body built with a taper, we're gonna pull the flex floss really tight and make about five or six turns up the hook. And as you get closer to your to the eyelet, you're gonna ease off on your flex floss and just make it a little bit thicker. Now that the body and the rib is tied in and I move my thread right to behind the, the bead, I'm going to take some of my Light Bright and I'm going to dub it on really lightly onto my thread. And again, you'll only need a small amount. And we'll get this dubbed on because we're going to pick it out a little bit just to form kind of a thorax and, and legs on the fly. And then just take a couple of wraps. Again, not too thick, just a few wraps around to form a nice thorax. Now that the thorax is tied in, I want to whip finish off. So I'll put a couple of, couple of whips in there, cut off your thread, and then what I'm going to do is just pick out the bottom of my thorax just to form just a few little legs off the fly. Now the last stage in the fly is to form the buds, and what I've found is whenever I've put in fabric paint on, 
unless I cover it or coat it, it doesn't last long. The fabric paint tends to chip off. So what I've done is I've combined it with some UV Knotsense or UV, you know, the clear UV finish. So what I do is put a little bit of UV clear finish down on a piece of paper and actually put some of the, the lime green fabric paint in there. And then I'm gonna mix it together with my bodkin. So any needle or your bodkin, mix that up. And the beauty of this is it'll never, it'll never set until you set it with a UV light. So I'll coat up, you know, I'll make enough to coat up probably 20 flies and it'll last a long time. So we mix it all together. And then once we have it mixed, we'll turn the fly sideways and put on our wing buds. Now the wing buds are on either side of the fly, so I've got a small one there and there. I'm gonna hit it with the UV light to set that up. So all this is gonna do, you just have to put it on that material for just, a, you know, probably 10, 20 seconds to set it up, just so that material stays nice and solid. And there it is, the finished Light Bright Coronamid. The beauty of Light Bright is it comes in a multitude of colors. You know, the oranges, purples, greens, and so does the Flex Floss. So the key here is experiment. Well, I want to thank everybody for watching the show today. And as you saw, the fishing conditions are tough. And that's just the way it is sometimes. But we wanted to make sure to show you the footage. And you got the benefit of two benches, which is never a bad thing. I want to thank my brother Dale, Big Al Dunbar, for joining me at Whitetail Lake. And, of course, the Freshwater Fishery Society of British Columbia. They continue to do a great job of stocking our BC lakes and maintaining BC as a world-class fishery. Anyways, take care when you're out in the wild. Conserve our waters. And we'll see you next time when we take you sport fishing on the fly. To watch all our latest sport fishing on the fly episodes and to order sport fishing on the fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca. And if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.